हरि ओम वी आर नाउ गेटिंग इन टू दि सेकेंड चैप्टर सेक्शन वन ऑफ दि उपनिषद एंड दिस इज द फस्ट मंत्र ऑफ दि अबव चैप्टर एंड सेक्शन द मंत्र रीड्स तदे तत् सत्यम यथा सुदीप्ता पावगा विस्फुलिंग सहस्रश प्रभवंदे सरूपा तथा क्षरा विविधा सौम्य भावा प्रजायंते तत्र चैवापि यंति दिस इज द मंत्र वी वर टिल नाउ डीलिंग विद द अपराविद्या द फाइनाइट नॉलेज ऑफ यागस एंड Yes. <clears throat> we also carefully in the last section noted the warnings of the shruti on the futility of pursuing only rituals as the end all and be all of life we were told to develop a self discipline in our lives and to cast away our ego and egocentric desires which is the greatest stumbling block for the self discovery we have also been told of the qualities of a good guru who we should approach and also a subtle direction of the shruti to the guru that he shall entertain a student who has been an honest and truthful adhikari for the search of brahman brahma and to guide him adequately in the ardas path towards shreyas we have seen this in the earlier section of the mantras from now onwards in a few mantras we will be circumscribing around the periphery of the paravidya the absolute knowledge the knowledge of the brahman the student is expected to exercise a greater concentration on the teachings and guidance of the guru from now so that the rudimentary and elementary aspects of this great knowledge is properly embedded in the head and heart of the seeker <clears throat> the mantra commences with a staunch declaration tade tat satyam this indeed is the truth what a daring declaration what that truth is now explained in order to drive an esoteric concept or an idea home the guru brings an example which is too familiar for the brahmana the seeker from the flaming fire of a yaga or etnya comes forth a plethora of sparks in the same way from that immortal immutable self the supreme the reality spring forth myriads of sparks called jivas the sparks born out of this big fire perambulates around the souls until the materials are completely burnt up when the materials drop down as ashes and the unseen fire 
merges with the main fire. Think. I know it is a bit uh, complicated matter to grasp, but yet we have to. Here, the sparks are nothing but the fire in its essence. They broke away from the main fire as sparks with a specific purpose to burn out certain foreign materials. And these foreign materials took the form of sparks because of the fire. The spark is because of the fire. Therefore, the fire is the cause and the foreign material is the effect of that spark. Carefully. The fire is the cause and the foreign material which is being burned is the effect of that spark. A theory of philosophy or to be precise our Sanadana Dharma whose veracity has been vouchsafed by modern science is that when the effect is perished it merges with the cause. When the effect is perished it merges with the cause. In other words, if from the cause the effect is removed, nothing remains as the effect merges with the cause. A couple of examples perhaps will drive away the confusion, if any. Now, pot, it's the shape its name is the effect and the mud is the cause. When the pot is broken, what remains is the mud. The name of the form of the pot is broken, what remains is the mud. Ornaments is the cause I'm sorry, ornaments is the effect and gold is the cause. So when ornaments are melted, the name and form of the ornaments are melted, what remains is a pure bar of gold. The liquidity of the water is the effect And H2O is the cause. When the water is decomposed, it merges to H2O. So in all these examples you find that when the effect and the cause is removed from the effect or when the effect is destroyed, the effect merges into the cause. There is no effect at all. What remains is the cause alone. You will understand this concept clearer as and when we study the further mantras. As of now, my only request is even if you don't get convinced, please don't get confused. Stay where you are. Understanding will certainly dawn on you, no doubt about it. Huh. Thus a small particle of fire contained by a little matter may appear to have gone away from the fireplace and as a seemingly separate entity moving around only during the period when it has not yet finished the particle that it has undertaken to burn. 
Once its job is over, the ashes are left to the elements and the elements of fire return to the main fire. In the same way, the little little jivas seem to flicker around hither and thither, parading their qualities of their burning matter willy-nilly, merge with the reality whose spark was his very existence. An individual is thus born only to burn out his accumulated vasanas or fruits of action and when this is performed in a state of yoga the body is decomposed and gets back to the five great elements with which it was made up of the air, the water, the fire, the space and the earth. And the vasanas, the subtle body, having exhausted all vasanas, nothing exists. It is an empty pack and what therefore left is only the energy that powered the jiva to be a jiva and that merges with the Supreme Self. <clears throat> what exactly is the nature of the Supreme Self and how does it differ from the Jiva will be discussed in future stanzas slowly. But before we close for the day, I cannot resist my temptation to draw your attention to the third line of this mantra where the Guru <clears throat> is conveying this message to the student with a salutation. With a salutation means with an address. He is addressing him with an adjective. He says, Tathaksharat vividha saumya bhava. Oh, saumya bhava. Oh, boy with compassion. Boy with composure. Boy with joy. Not agitated. Not worried. Not tensed up. Not worked up. Prashanta Chitta you are. This is how the Guru addresses the student, Saumya Bhava. Sanadana Dharma never considers anybody for that matter as a sinner. We are all children of the immortal bliss. But due to passage of time and the format of education that we have, the children are never addressed as children of immortal self or immortal bliss. When a kindergarten student gets into his class, the first thing that he hears from a teacher is words like idiot, stupid, donkey, ass. These are the things that he forms in his mind. Our culture is never that at all. We always used to address the disciples as Oh children of immortal bliss. Saumya Bhavad. Saumya Bhava means man of Prashant Chitta. Calm, cool, composed, recollected, sattvic. This is what we are in nature. We shall see the future slokas as and when we come across. Hari Om.